Our Father, we thank you for bringing us to the workers' retreat. We pray that you speak to us again today in Jesus' name. For the time we have before us now, I want to look at the message, leadership and elating. We need to understand that all good things that happen in church depends on the leadership and the laity. Without understanding, fellowship, love, and trust between the leadership and the laity in every section of the work in the church, not much will be done. Everything rises or falls with the strength or the weakness in the tie between the leadership and the laity. A leader is a person who leads in a direction in order to reach a destination. When we talk about a leader, whether in the family or at school or in society or in the church or in a section of the church, we're talking about a person with a leading role, a leading function, leading other people in a direction they ought to follow so that they will reach a specified goal. This person who leads the way, who guides or who directs the group of people is known as a leader. The group of people who are supposed to follow in carrying on instruction or carrying whatever they are given to do so that they can all reach the destination of the goal together. These people are referred to you as the laity. The link between the laity and the leadership is so very important. Without the leader, the people or the laity may be active, but they will not be productive. Neither will they be successful. On the other hand, without the laity, that is, the group of people who are following leadership, the leader cannot achieve the goal or the purpose of the existence of that group of people. So then, the leader cannot stand alone. He needs the laity. Neither can the laity stand alone. They need a leader. These people that we refer to as laity obviously need the instruction, the encouragement, the guidance, or the leadership of the leader. The leader, on the other hand, depends so much on the function and the role and the activities of the laity so that there will be achievement. The laity, as you have learned, are the members of the church who do not have special training of professional officers. In a way, we may all be referred to as the laity because we do not have training of a professional level to do the work that we're doing we are untrained people but we follow leadership we follow instruction even if we went for professional training all that the training will do for us is still to give us instruction and these are the instructions we are being given day to day but as laity we need to understand that we are to follow the leadership. On the other hand, we are also leaders. Because you two, you stand in leadership position. And you are leading people who do not have the training that you have. You know that there are people under you, they may be 10, they may be 15, they may be 20. And they are following in a particular direction you are guiding them in a direction you are leading them so that a particular purpose will be achieved in the kingdom of God. When you look at it from that angle, you are a leader. And the people that are following after you are the laity. 
and yet when you look at it in another way you form part of the laity and then you have a leader who also leads you the important thing we need to understand is that the leader does not stand alone think about yourself as a leader by the grace of god that the lord has placed you in a responsible position of leading and guiding of instructing and teaching of showing the way to other people you tell them how they ought to live what they ought to do how they ought to do the work of god and you are leading them you cannot stand alone you need them there should be fellowship between you and the people that you are leading there should be understanding between you and the people that you are leading there should be love there should be trust it is when they have confidence in you and you have confidence in them that's what we call trust that you will be able to lead them and they will be able to follow you you cannot stand alone as you also look at yourself as part of the laity and you have a leader over you the leader over you cannot stand alone he needs you and there should be understanding there should be fellowship there should be love and trust between you and the leader that leads you everything we do will rise will increase will be productive will be successful when the strength in the tie between the leader and us is very strong but everything we try to do will collapse will crumble if the tie within the leader and us the laity is so weak and there is no trust and there is no love and there is no fellowship and there is no understanding ultimately we need to know that god is our leader who leads us in the way that we ought to go we need to have this understanding every time so that we will be able to follow as we ought to follow god is the leader he is the one who marks out the way who gives the instruction let's look at genesis sorry at deuteronomy chapter 32 deuteronomy chapter 32 from verse 9 for the lord's portion is his people jacob is the lord of his inheritance he found him in the desert land and in the waste howling wilderness he led him about he instructed him he kept him as the apple of his eye as an eagle stirreth up her nest fluttereth over her young spreadeth abroad her wings taketh them beareth them on her wings so the lord alone did lead him and there was no strange god with him talking about the movement of the children of israel from their starting point their departing point unto the intended promised destination the land of canaan we're told here that god alone did lead israel and so god was their leader and he gave them the pillar of cloud by day the pillar of fire by night he showed them where to stop he showed them how to move he showed them when to rest he showed them when to pick up all their baggages and start the journey again he marked out the way and showed the direction in which they ought to move he sent his love to them he communicated his faithfulness his mercy as a covenant keeping god unto them he overcame their enemies in the way he silenced all the voices of their enemy the serpents and the scorpions in the way he got read for them and he provided manna for them every day in their journey when there was no water he gave them water he met all their need and in this verse 12 he says so the lord alone 
did lead him. There was no strange God with him. We need to understand that today. It is still the same way. Ultimately, God is our leader. Ultimately, it is God who is showing the way. That is why we need to keep to the word of God every time. Because we need to follow after him. As it is revealed in his word. We need to follow after him as he is instructing and guiding. As he is showing us the way from the world to heaven. Every child of God has the responsibility of following God as the leader. And those of us who have privilege in the church to help other people to see who God is, to help other people to follow the plan of God, to help other people to see the way that leads to heaven, we must look up to God. Because God is the leader. All that we can do is to show the people who God is. Show the people the way of the Lord. Show the people what God desires and what he delights in. We must not block the view of the people from God. You see, that is a danger. When we begin to think that we are the ultimate, final leaders of the people, we can block their view from God. We may be cloud them. That they see too much of God, too much of us, they see nothing of God. They see too much of our callousness, too much of our authority, too much of our own understanding, too much of our own knowledge, too much of our own carnality, and they do not see enough of the grace of God, of the mercy of God, of the instruction of the Lord, of the doctrines of the Bible. Let us understand, brothers and sisters, that ultimately God is the leader and he is the one that the people need to follow and the best we can do for the people is to show them who god is where god wants them to be what god wants them to do in psalm 77 psalm 77 verse 20 psalm 77 verse 20 Thou ledest thy people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Here we come to another revelation in the word of God. That God is the leader. Thou ledest thy people like a flock. But then how did he lead? By appointing Moses and Aaron. He, had, he appointed people. And these people were to stand in front of the people in the physical. They were to be God's representatives and ambassadors for the people. They were to hear from God and they were to tell the people. As they were leading, they were not the ultimate leaders. God himself was the ultimate leader. And therefore, all they were to do was to point the people to the way of the Lord. They were to hear from the Lord every moment of the day and every day in the journey. And they were not to take any decision in their own mind. They were not to take any decision according to their own feeling. They were not to take any decision as they wanted. They were to lead the people to follow after the Lord as they will be hearing by, from the Lord. He led them by the hand of Moses and Aaron. This tells us that God selects people. He appoints people. I'm sure you know, he appointed Moses himself. It was not by vote. It was not by a democratic kind of pulling together that they decided Moses should rule after them. In fact, you know, that if they were to choose, they would never have chosen Moses. From what they thought, Moses had some peculiarities. He had some shortcomings. He had some weaknesses. They will never have chosen Moses. But God chose Moses. Why? Because he does not see as man sees. He knows more than man knows. Maybe the people you are leading will not have chosen you if they were to choose. Maybe. Who knows? But God has placed you 
upon the people to represent him to be christ's ambassador so that you can lead the people in the direction that he wants them to be led another time he chose david to serve his generation he said i have found a man after my own heart because of the young age of david his brothers will not have recommended him maybe some people will not have recommended you for the leadership role that you play in the church but god in his own way chose you and now he wants you to lead the people according to his own mind in the new testament he chose the apostles he placed them over the people before we go to the new testament let's see micah micah chapter 6 verse 4 for i brought thee up out of the land of egypt remember there is the lord who is the leader i brought thee out of the land of egypt i led you out and redeemed thee out of the house of, of servants and i sent before thee moses aaron and miriam here god himself tells us that in his choice of leadership he chose men and women he said he sent before them who is the leader is somebody who goes before that others can follow is somebody who leads the way that others can follow it's others who will know the way and go that way before the rest of the people that others can follow and god said i said before you in front of you to walk before you to lead the way before you moses and aaron and miriam here after so many years god himself claimed moses aaron and miriam for himself that he sent them to lead the people in the new testament you know jesus christ chose the apostles so that they will lead the way and then we're told in ephesians chapter 4 ephesians chapter 4 from verse 11 ephesians chapter 4 from verse 11 and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of christ verse 11 is talking about the leadership verse 12 is talking about the laity the perfecting of the saints the untrained saints and yet god wants these saints to be in fellowship in love under the instruction and the authority of the appointed leaders so that the work will be done and the ultimate goal is in verse 13 till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of god unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ our goal is already marked out by the lord he wants leadership to bring the laity to the point that we are all in the unity of the faith one god one lord one spirit one faith one doctrine one baptism and so our responsibility is to lead the people the way the lord wants us to lead them and then it says in verse 12 for the perfecting of the saints for the maturing of the saints the laity needs to be developed the laity needs to grow the laity needs to be directed in such a way that they themselves will come to perfection maturity in knowledge maturity in the work of god maturity in the activities they do for the glory of god and for the work of the ministry from the beginning 
the laity is supposed to carry on or carry out the work of the ministry. It is not the appointed leaders who are supposed to do everything that is to be done. It is not the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher who are supposed to do every area of work or who are supposed to achieve everything achievable in the church of the living God they were to pass the vision across to the laity. Train the laity. Instruct the laity. Map out areas of work for the laity until they are perfected or matured for the work of the ministry. And they in turn, as they are working in the ministry, they will be edifying or building up the body of Christ. You will see again what I said at the beginning. That the leader is to lead the laity. So that we can get the work done. The leader cannot do without the laity. The laity cannot do without the leader. They are both important. The leader is important for the laity. The laity is very, very important. Necessary for the leader as well. But then, this tells us something. To lead the laity according to God's plan, according to God's purpose and God's power, the leader himself must be completely under the control of God, the true leader. Please understand that whatever leadership role we have, ultimately God is the leader. We are just standing on behalf of God as his ambassador, as his representative. So then, everything we do will be patterned after the leadership quality of God himself. And God has shown us the model leader. His name, Jesus Christ. He said, all things that I've seen my father do, that I do. That's the model leader. He also said that he is the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep is the model leader and so then if we as leaders are going to fulfill our roles very well we need to see what jesus did as a leader over his own disciples as laity and then we will need to see how those disciples followed after what jesus did and they too in turn they made sure that their leadership role was patterned after the model role of the leader of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, today, I told you, we stand in the two places. One, you are leaders over other people. On the other hand, you are part of the laity. Being matured, being perfected, so that you can get involved in the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ. As we say we're going to follow God himself, as the leader because we're under his authority and we want to pattern our leadership after the leadership role of Christ what do we learn of the leadership role of the Lord Jesus Christ one he knew the goal that was set before him it's something very important for leadership if the laity is going to be directed aright we must know the goal that is set before us. Jesus knew the goal and he set his face as a flinch to go and fulfill the goal that was set before him in Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, verse 51. And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up. He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. That's one good quality of a leader. And this is what we see in the model role that Jesus Christ played. He knew the goal. He was never diverted. And he never went astray. He set his face as a flinch. This is the same thing you will find about the apostles. After Jesus Christ had committed every other thing to them. 
and he went away to heaven. There was imprisonment. They never deviated from the goal. They knew that he had given them the responsibility. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. They did not allow poverty. They did not allow persecution. They did not allow nakedness. They did not allow discouragement to make them deviate. They followed the modern role of the leadership of Jesus Christ. They set their face as a flint to follow after the example of the Lord and keep on bringing people into the kingdom of God. Today, what destroys our leadership role? What makes us ineffective is that we allow some little, little things to hinder. Opposition, persecution, poverty, nakedness. We allow some of these things to hinder us. We do not set our face as a flint following after the goal. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 15 and verse 16. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal a son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen immediately. I conferred not with flesh and blood. Immediately, I conferred not with flesh and blood. This is a significant thing in the leadership role of a child of God who takes Jesus as the model leader that you will not confer with flesh and blood. Flesh will cry out when you are hungry. Flesh will cry out when you are being persecuted. Flesh will cry out when there is opposition. Flesh will cry out when there is no job. Flesh will cry out when you need to get married and there is no wife yet. Flesh will cry out when you have got married and maybe there is no child yet. Flesh will cry out when your place of work there is no promotion at the due time. And then will tell you, don't, think, don't you think you need to deviate? You need to change your course. You need to change the thing that you are doing in your life. You need to leave the work a little. But he said, I conferred not with flesh and blood. And you see the way Paul the Apostle did it. He had to put the body under every time. Bring my body under sub subjection. The flesh will speak out. The flesh will try to rebel. The flesh will try to tell you that you have done enough. But he said, I comfort not with flesh and blood. You remember the Lord Jesus Christ? Peter took him and he said, you will not face the cross. Jesus rebuked Peter. Get thee behind me, Satan. You have to be rebuking Satan every time like that. Anytime a thought comes to your mind to deviate from the goal, to leave the work alone, to feel tired and act tired, and to sleep and to pull the blanket over your face that you cannot do more now because of all the things that you have gone through and all the things you are going through that's devil that's satan if you yield you're making satan your master if you yield you're following after the devil if you yield and you give up the work that he has committed in your hand you are following the devil and not jesus anymore he knew the goal that was set before him. He never deviated. And another thing we see in the life of Jesus, he was committed to only one single purpose. He didn't try to get involved or get entangled with the affairs of this life. There were a lot of things that people could have got him, gotten him involved with, but he never got involved. He set himself just for the work. That the father had committed into his hand. We see in John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Verse 15. When Jesus therefore perceived. That they would come and take him by force. To make him a king. He departed again into a mountain himself alone. There were people. That would have made Jesus Christ to begin to think of another thing. That maybe he will lead the rebellion or the coup. So that they will rebel and secede from the government of Rome. But he will not accept. He hid himself when they wanted to make him a king. There are many people today who have been called into the leadership position as house leader. Or maybe 
as an area leader or zonal leader or in another capacity. But then opportunities begin to show up. Opportunities outside the country. Opportunities within the country. And there are places of work uh, planning to take them out of the leadership position that God has given them in the church. They never see this as a temptation from the devil. They never look at it. They think every kind of promotion must be coming from God. They think that if the management will meet together and they will say they are going to make them a king, they are going to make them a manager, and they are going to transfer them out of the place where God has given them a ministry, they think that it must be of God. Because they think every scholarship comes from God. They think every progress in the secular realm comes from God. But Jesus knew when they wanted to make him a king, it was not from God. He knew that he was not heading for the palace, he was heading for the cross. He knew the way of the cross leads home. And you see, for many people today, the reason they have missed what God asked for them in the church of God is that they have not committed themselves to the single purpose. Another thing we learn about the Lord Jesus Christ is that he always led the way in all things. Always. He led in all things. He led his own disciples in healing the sick. He did it first so they could follow. He led his people, his disciples in casting out devils. He did it first so they could follow. He led his disciples in witnessing, witnessing to men like Nicodemus, witnessing to women like the woman at the well so that they could follow. He led the way in village evangelism. He went to the cities and the villages of the land so that the other disciples could follow. He led in everything if we're going to be leaders. After the model of the Lord Jesus Christ, we will have to lead the way. He led in love. You see, as uh, their master, as the Lord, he loved more than everybody else. Isn't that the quality of a leader? The quality of a leader is that he loves more than everybody else. If we can borrow from the language of Paul the Apostle when he said, I speak in tongues more than ye all. We can say about the Lord Jesus Christ, I love more than ye all. That is, if you bring all the love of the disciples together, the totality of the love of all the disciples together are not even, is not even up to the love of Jesus Christ. That's a model leader. And if we are going to be a model leader, you will lead the way in all things. Number one thing, you will lead the way in love. So that if you bring all the love of the people together in the zone, your love should still be more than the totality of their love. When they get tired loving, you are not tired yet. When they get discouraged loving, you are not discouraged yet. When it appears, they say, all these people we have been loving, they are not showing the response, and they are not showing the respect, and therefore I will just give up. You don't give up yet, because you love more than the rest of the people. That's a leader. He leads the way. Not only that, he taught them. But the way Jesus Christ taught as a model leader, first, he taught by example. He was never moved by anything. And after that, he taught them on faith. On the stormy sea, he wasn't uh, showing that he was restless. He was afraid. And he thought that he might die there. He had peace of mind. After that, he demonstrated the faith. And then taught them about faith and said, where is your faith? You see, in the zone, if you are a real leader, you, do, you don't just talk about faith. You demonstrate faith. You show the example of faith. When the people are panicking, you don't panic. When the people are worried and anxious, you are not worried, you are not anxious. When somebody is sick and people are saying, he might die, you don't believe that. When people are running up and down and they say that these people of other religions are creating trouble for us, we may not be able to have the house fellowship today and the house fellowship leader is coming back to say, follow after me. You go right into the midst of that mob. You quieting them down. That's leadership. That's leadership. You lead by example as well as by instruction. When everybody is getting late, you are there first. 
so that they will know you have been there first. And then after you have been there first, you begin to teach the people about punctuality. When people are to submit report, you show it by example first. You submit your own report to your own leader who is superior to you. And then you'll be able to teach other people by your example. You'll say, this is how I do it. This is how you will do it. You lead, you teach by example as well as by instruction. And then Jesus always encouraged the people. You know how many times they said, fear not, little flock. Fear not, because your heavenly father is watching over you. He always encouraged them. He never discouraged them. He never told them things that are negative. He never terrified them. He never used undue authority to make them act slavishly. And you see, that is the same thing we should do as well. If we are following Christ as a model example in the house fellowship, we should lead. In our area, we should lead. Always encourage. Always encourage. We learn about the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 12. In his ministry of encouragement. Matthew chapter 12. In verse 20. A bruised reed shall he not break. Smoking flags shall he not quench. Till he sent forth judgment unto victory. To say it the way you can understand. It is to say that he didn't always discipline. He rebuked very briefly. He loved abundantly. He allowed his love to be more than his, his use of authority. If you see how the Lord Jesus Christ dealt with people, he never dealt with his disciples as he dealt with Pharisees and scribes and Sadducees. Think about it. Never. When you think about the Lord Jesus Christ, he was sharp, very hard on the hypocrites, on the Pharisees, on the scribes, on the Sadducees, but never on his disciples. Oh yes, he corrected them, but he balanced his correction with comfort. His control was gentle. And because of this, they loved him. That's why they were so sorrowful when he was to go away. You see today, when we leaders, when we are not around, how do our people feel? You as a house fellowship leader, when you are not around, how does the house fellowship feel? Are they sorrowful? When you come back after two days or after three days, do they rush to your house and say, Sister, where did you go? Sister, we'll be looking for you. Or when you move to another district or another zone, maybe you have got married and then your husband is living in another zone and they don't see you again, even though they know you are getting married and they know that you have to live with your husband, do they see you and say, Sister, we have missed you? All the people in the house fellowship are saying, why can't she continue to live in her zone? And then you laugh and say, well, you know, I'm married now. I have to be with my husband. Oh, yes, we know. Can you not tell your husband that uh, we love you so much and we want you to be here? That is a real leader. As a house leader, as a zonal leader, or as an area leader, do you have the confidence of the people in the zone like that? When Jesus was going away, when, and he told them, they were so sorrowful. And Jesus said, you are so sorrowful because I've told you I'm going away. That's the model leader. Now, from today, you need to understand that the kind of trust, the kind of confidence, the kind of love you ought to build in your people is the kind of love that will be very fond of you. The kind of love that will not want you to be away a long time, that they will so love you and the, reason, the way you can do that is that a bruised reed you will never break. But you know some people in, the, in leadership, it appears that they have been waiting for that reed to be bruised. And once they see any little blemish, any little bruise in that reed, they break it and throw it away. Jesus never did that. You see, if anybody would have been telling people, go and pray for salvation, you are not born again. 
Jesus should have told Peter many times to be born again. You know what he said many, many times, but Jesus never discouraged him. He will correct him, and immediately he will show love unto him. The same thing with James and John. He had to correct them a lot of times, but he never broke their heart. He never destroyed them. He corrected him, them in such a way that they still loved him. There are many ways of correcting people. You can correct the laity, the people under your leadership, in a way that they will love you. Oh, they will say, Sister so and so, she does not want me to perish. She loves me. She corrected me. And she's never frowned at me like that. But immediately I know she started to comfort me. Brother so and so, I know I offended him. I know I disappointed him. And the way he spoke to me, but you see, he was very, very careful. He didn't want to break my heart. Immediately, he comforted me again. That's if we are modeling our leadership. After that, of the Lord Jesus Christ, a bruised reed shall he not break. How many bruised reeds have we broken? A smoking flag shall he not quench. How many people have we quenched their zeal? Have we destroyed their love? Have we destroyed all the things they wanted to do for the gospel and for the propagation of the kingdom of God? As we learn, let's love more. Let's teach by example and by instruction. Let us encourage and then Jesus inspired the brethren. What he did made them inspired when he was walking on the sea. Peter said, if you are, let me do that, that you are doing. You see, the beauty in the leadership role of Jesus Christ is that everything he did, he was looking for the time he'll be able to make all his disciples do those things. And that is what our leadership ought to be. You inspire the people that are following to be able to do everything that you are doing. And he prayed often for them. As a leader, he prayed for them more than he prayed for himself. He prayed for the crowd, but he didn't stop there. He prayed for the needy, but he didn't stop there. He prayed for the people that he led, and he cared for them. You know he cared for them. He provided to meet their need. When he saw they were tired, he met their need in telling them they need to come apart and rest. In Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6, verse 31. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. Do you know Jesus never overworked his disciples? He knew when they ought to eat. He knew when they ought to rest. And there is something we need to learn from Jesus Christ here. We should never overwork people. We should know when people need rest. We should know when people need to plan for their lives. We should know when people need to pray about their marriage. We should know when people need to give some time to their official work. We should know when people need to give some time to their carpentry or to their, um, to their professional handcraft that they are doing. Jesus never overworked the people. He made them work, but he never overworked them. Sometimes what we see in our zones is that it appears we multiply activities. We do not allow the people to care for their children, to care for their wives, or we do not allow the wives to care for their husbands. Or we do not allow the people to serve their masters. We do not allow them to have a well-regulated life. But we overwork them. We multiply activities in the zone. And you see, all those activities do not bring any result. The reason is because tired people may be active, they will never be productive. Prayerless people may be active, they will never be productive. The people that are always running up and down, always picking this and dropping that and going this way and going that way. No time to sleep. No time to rest. No time to eat. No time to plan marriage. No time to care for their children. No time to do anything worthwhile 
for their personal lives. No time to study, no time to read the Bible, just activity and activity and activity. No time to rest. Even when the person is having high blood pressure, even when the person is getting tired and worn out, even when the person is about, uh, you know, just being destroyed and uh, just falling off and uh, just fainting, we say, well, you must do more. You must do more activity, activity all the time. You know, Jesus never did that for his disciples. He knew when they needed rest. And he said, come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. And so if we're modeling our leadership role, after the leadership role of Jesus Christ, we will care, we will protect. He protected the disciples. When they came to take him, he said, if you are seeking me, let these go their way. In particular, because of our time, he lived with the people. This is something you will find about the Lord Jesus Christ. He lived with his own disciples. This is the reason he chose them in Mark chapter 3, verse 14. And he ordained twelve that they should be with him, and he, that he might send them forth to preach, that they should be with him. That's why Matthew was able to write the complete history of the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ. Jesus never hid anything from them. You see, if we're going to be appreciated as leaders among the people, we should so live with the people. They know us. They know how we feel. They know how we think. They know how we talk. They know how we act. They know how we respond. They know what decisions we're going to take on a particular matter. They know what we love. They know what we don't appreciate. They know how we'll de we deal with every issue. That's how Matthew was able to write. That's how Mark, Luke, John were able to write. They lived with him. On the stormy sea, he was in the boat and he was sleeping. And they went to wake him up. They had access to him. You see, in your own house fellowship, the people must have access to you. Not if, my friend, you are a house fellowship leader and you have a dog at your gate. And when the house fellowship members, whenever they have any problem and they are looking for house leader, the dog at the gate will bite them. They will never come again. How are you a house fellowship leader? And if you do not have access and the people do not have access to you, how will you be a leader over them? He lived with the people. He knew when they had problems and he always helped them out. He never said, go and solve your problem. I don't know any solution to that. He never said, this storm, I don't know what I'm going to do. Go and find another solution. And if you're in the zone, you allow people to go to herbalist because you have no solution. You allow people to go to deceivers because you have no solution. You allow people to go to all these other deceiving assemblies and churches because you have no solution. How do you pattern your leadership role after that of the Lord Jesus? There was no problem that the disciples brought to the Lord Jesus Christ that he did not have solution for. They had interpersonal problem, he had solution. They had problem of confusion, he had solution. They had problem of the lack of knowledge, he had solution. They had the problem of fear, he had solution. The mother-in-law of uh, Peter had sickness, he had solution. Every problem that these disciples had, he had solution. My brothers and sisters, that is leadership. Leadership is not just having, it's not having a certificate. It's not having a title. It's not having position. It is having solution to problems of the laity, of the people that are with us so that we can help them. Not only that, he was consecrated to meet all their needs. His consecration was so that he will meet their need. It said in John chapter 17, verse 19. John chapter 17, verse 19. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself. I set apart myself. I consecrate myself. So that 
they also might be sanctified through the truth. He consecrated himself for their spiritual good. And whenever you live your life as a leader, you never forget the people of God, the laity. Every decision you take must take in the consideration of the people you are leading. Every decision you take in wanting to travel must consider the people that God has given you to lead. Every decision you take to go to the village, to go and visit your people, must put into consideration your people that you are leading. And then he demonstrated every area of ministry before his followers. He demonstrated and he did it in love. He didn't do it to make the people ashamed. If you get to the house fellowship, you're an area leader or house or the zonal leader. You get to the house fellowship. And the house fellowship leader is not teaching well. You do not take it over and then teach to bring him to shame. To show that house fellowship that is this fellow is a useless teacher, is a useless leader. If you do that, they will never respect that house fellowship leader. And yet, you have to demonstrate every area of ministry before your followers. And therefore, if they do not know how to lead very well, you go to that house fellowship and you say, Sister, God bless you. I have not been here for a long time. Thank God for the great work you are doing here. If you don't mind, can I talk to the people just for a moment? And then you take over the house fellowship. And uh, you say, I'm the zonal leader, or I'm the woman representative, or I'm the area leader. And I thank the Lord for giving me the privilege of being with you today. Thank God for our sister who is leading the fellowship. And then you lead. And then privately, when you finish, you call the sister. You say, sister, the way you are talking to them, it, it appeared you are fighting with them. As if you had something against some people there, and that will not help your ministry. God has raised you up as a leader. Do your best to love the people. Do your best that the people will love you. You say that privately. Or if you say, brother, you call the brother aside and say, brother, I'm sure you can do better than that. I'm sure you can lead better than that. The way you are leading, maybe I came at the wrong time. Maybe I came at the time you were not your best. I think, I think you're a good leader. It's only that uh, what I saw, I think you need to correct it a little bit. And you do not say anything before those people so that they will not respect that house leader anymore. You will demonstrate every area of the ministry before the followers. And Jesus did that. You will love and you will forgive. You see how Jesus forgave his own disciples? He saw them and said, children, have you any, any meat? When they had gone astray, they said, no, Lord. He loved them. He said, throw your net there. Do we show people who have failed the way out of failure? Do we show people who have fallen the way out of their fallen state? That's the example of Jesus Christ as a model leader. He gave them the work and then he supervised them. He gave them the work they ought to do. Let's look at Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. Reading from verse 7, Mark 6, 7. And he called unto him the twelve, and began to send them forth by two and two, and gave them power over unclean spirits. He gave them the responsibility, and he gave them the resources to carry out the responsibility. When you give out responsibility, give out resources as well. Give them the know-how, the wherewithal what they will use in carrying out the responsibility you are giving them. In Mark chapter 6 verse 12, And they went out and preached that men should repent. But then when they finished, because Jesus needed to supervise them, in Mark chapter 6 verse 30, And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things, everything. Both what they had done and what they had taught. Do you see the necessity of supervision here? That's how Jesus did it. He did not just leave the work in their hand completely without supervision. He delegated the work to them, the ministry to them, and then he supervised. 
because here they told him all things what they had done and what they had taught to areas of report report on teaching on the doctrine on the preaching that they gave and the report on the ministration so that they reported back on everything and then he balanced authority with love in his dealings with them he manifested authority but he manifested more love when authority is more than love we get into trouble the people become fearful the people become agitated the, the people will be afraid that if they make any mistake again the leader is going to be authoritative over them and is going to really screw them and rebuke them and maybe even abuse them but we should balance authority with love in our dealings with the people under us correction is good control is good but comfort and counseling will be good at the appropriate time so let us lead the lady to do the work leaders should work and should motivate and mobilize the lady to work successfully the goal of the leader is to have is to reproduce the qualities of christ in himself and then to reproduce the qualities of christ in the lady in all the people that are following i pray that god will help us in our leadership position so that we will be able to lead the laity to be useful in the kingdom of God. To make progress in the kingdom of God. That there will be understanding between us leaders and the laity. Fellowship between us leaders and the laity. Love between us leaders and the laity. Trust between us leaders and the laity. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you very much because tonight you have extracted our leadership in the zone, in the area, in all the areas of the work we are doing in your kingdom. Lord, you have shown us the type of leadership style that you really practicalize when you are with the disciples. Lord, and we look into our own type of leadership style. Lord, we can say that we are far, far away from what you are. We are far away from the type of life you live with the disciples. Lord, we have seen that this is an area that has been affecting the growth of the work we have committed to our hands. Lord, we repent today. We just pray, Lord, that the love, the concern, the compassion between leaders and laity that you expect from us, that as from today, we put them on in the name of Jesus Christ. This retreat continue to teach us. This retreat continue to correct us. This retreat, remove all things that will not make us to prosper in the work of God from our lives. We bless you because you have answered. Thank you. I'm so excited today because God has been so faithful to me. I'm going to keep this very short. First of all, I want to thank God for the church. The church has been my family. Um, thank you so much, Pastor Dada. He has been a father to me. I don't start crying. Okay, um, I remember I came here without um, scholarship to Harvard University. The first year wasn't easy, but I got a grant that paid half of my tuition. But then from second year, I got like five different scholarships from my classmates. From I just thank God. Third year, the same thing. And I thank God because I'll be graduating in May. I didn't have to